as a manager, like, did you did you know that the Netflix documentary was going to be filmed upon signing? Yeah, it was already agreed by the time I'd got there. I think David Moyes had turned down the opportunity to do it the previous <laughs> year, which was very wise of him. <laughs> um, so you had to, you just had to accept it. Ellis Short decided that whatever money he was going to get, he wanted to recoup by doing this documentary. So I had no no sort of um, saying what was in terms of that they were doing it or not. Ultimately, we had a say in where the cameras went. They, they didn't have a free license to go where they want. I think when you see the documentary, they would film parts of training, which was early parts of the training sessions, the warm ups, etc. Very rarely, well, they weren't in the dressing rooms for any team meetings apart from one which was done in a pre-season, um, before a pre-season match. So it didn't have anything real relevance to it. So they were very limited in terms of um, access into dressing rooms or vital parts of yeah. my office and other people's offices. Um, but it was still a little bit of hindrance that people were still around all the time. Players were certainly aware of things that were, that were probably... I don't think it had any effect on the results or anything like that, no. but... I think if you were to offer the opportunity to any players, would you like to have a documentary crew following you around every minute of the day or not? I think 90 odd percent would say yeah. not because I think they like to have their own privacy, like to have their own banter and jokes and it can put you on a little bit of edge. And I think when you've looked at some of the other different documentaries as well that have come out, Tottenham's, Man City's, Leeds, these have been made by uh, their own football clubs. Well, the, the Sunderland one was by Fullwell 73, who were Sunderland fans, but they weren't part of the football club. So mm. when you look at the other ones, a lot of the the um, editing um, can be made the club to look really well. Where when it's from the outside source, there was certain, they're always looking for maybe a good guy, bad guy, bad guy, sort of good times, bad times. So and you're not involved in any sort of um, saying what the final product is, even to the point of when I was I left, I was still contracted to do certain parts for them. And I, two months later, I'm doing interviews in London in a hotel, three different rooms, three different shirts, and, I want, and they're wanting me to talk passionately about Sunderland when I'm being sat two months earlier. So, oh, well. <laughs> yeah, so oh, I, that's, yeah, which people don't realise. And I know some of the editing as well was scoring at Norwich and Norwich is full of green seats and it turns to me on the bench and there's a lot of red ones behind me. Well, that doesn't make sense. So there's a lot of things. But ultimately, the documentary was a good reflection, not a good mm. reflection, it was a good opportunity for people to see yeah. what it's like behind the scenes of a real big football club and a troubled football club and the passion mm. that supporters show, but the circumstances that um, us as managers, me and Chris Coleman, had to deal with um, on a on a regular basis, probably every minute of the day, we, we're dealing with pro some form of problems. Yeah, God, that's really I I had no idea that that. Well, looking back, I can I can see it, <laughs> but at that time, I just really didn't. And you make a good point there that I never really thought about either. Like I've seen all the I've seen the Leeds one, the Salford City one, Tottenham, a few different ones, and you can kind of tell because they talk. I mean, they're good clubs. Like all of them are good clubs, but they talk about them like in a passionate way like why they love the club why they should be here why they're going to be here when it was Sunderland you'd you'd have that little bit and then you'd have like like say you two months after like eventually um losing the job there and then it would be like they've spent x amount of money and there's like massive graph that just like <laughs> plummets down and there's like horrible music and all this sort of stuff so yeah that's uh, it's interesting that you that you point that out and um I guess was it a bit like you mentioned you could they couldn't go into team talks they couldn't watch training sessions and we didn't see any of that but was it a bit i'm not gonna say it had an impact on the results because you know things like that really don't but do you wish you had your players from preston there because they would have dealt with that better or just because the results would have been more beneficial yeah i don't think i think like i said i don't think the the cameras had any influence on the results i think mm -hmm. Ultimately, I said I would take the players there because I felt they were better players yeah. with better attitudes. So that was a simple reason. And that's no disrespect. So that wasn't aimed at all the Sunderland players because some players yeah. ended up being good players for me. McGeady was, was an outstanding player. Um, Lewis Graben mm -hmm. for the first half of the season scored loads of goals. Yeah. But there was a certain section of players that didn't want to be there. They'd earn fortunes in the Premier League and you get reduction 
in salary, you haven't got the same sort of desire. You think you're tech, you think you're a better player than you are. You think you should be not playing in the championship. You're playing in the Premier League or in the top divisions in France, Spain, Germany, or whatever. So when the window shuts and you're still there, then there's <laughs> there is this sort of still negative vibe. And I know that I had a group of players respected me and I respected them that they would run through a brick wall for me, which they did, and they, they would have done that at Sunderland because they wanted to make careers for themselves. They wanted to, they was wanting to improve the salaries by even a small amount where the lads at Sunderland are, are taking big hits on reductions from the Premier League. So it was a desire thing rather than uh, the cameras and the documentary. 